Anthony Davis needs to toughen up. And that's just where I'm at because he has been in and out of the lineup ever since putting on that Lakers uniform, ever since becoming number three. He has been in and out of the lineup for every little knickknack injury. Every single time this guy goes to the ground, which is multiple times per game, it's like, oh my God, please get up, please get up. And that's not an over dramatization that's that's not one of those because he truly does hold something wince and I don't know if this man's got the lowest pain tolerance in NBA history if he has super brittle muscles and bones and everything or what because this dude is constantly hurt and not only that when he is back half the time he just decides not to show up and it's weird because in 2020 it felt like he did show up a lot of the time, and recently, I feel like he has been showing up quite a bit of the time, but it's kind of comes in and out in phases, because last night in game two of the first round series against the Grizzlies, he had 13 points, and really, three of those points were from a shot that he took at the end of the game, just a three that he kind of launched that, like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like it really counts. So, really, he had 10 points up until that shot that was after the game was kind of already decided. Now, I know the Lakers only scored 93 points, so you can't get on him too much, but 13 points is awful. Nine rebounds. He's got to be double digits every game. He's got to be. He's got a mega height advantage. I believe Xavier Tillman is a couple inches shorter than Anthony Davis, and that is who AD was being guarded by, who was on he was on for most of the game. So I, th- I just think there's no excuse for him to not have double digit rebounds. So Xavier Tillman, yeah, he's six, eight Anthony Davis. What is he listed at? I would say six ten, six eleven. I'm going to say six ten, six ten. So he's got a two inch height advantage there. Jaron Jackson jr. I would guess is the same height as Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is a lot bigger though, like wider, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. is 6'11". So, Jaron Jackson Jr. does have a 1-inch height advantage, but he's 242. Anthony Davis is 253. Okay, they say he's only 9 pounds heavier, but Anthony Davis is built way bigger than Jaron Jackson Jr. So, there's no excuse there. He had three blocks, but other than those three blocks, I don't think that AD really did much defensively because, uh, or I believe it was three blocks, was it? it? It was, okay, he had five blocks. Dang. Wow. Five blocks. But other than those five blocks, it felt like he was just getting scored on and scored on and scored on by Xavier Tillman. Xavier Tillman had an amazing game. Probably the best game of his career, I would guess. He had 22 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists, and uh, what did he shoot? It felt like this dude did not miss. And it's because he didn't. 10 for 13 from the field, and that's 1 from 2 for 3. So... From two, from inside the paint, most likely, he was, what does that make him, nine for, nine for 11, which is just amazing, Um, and he was a plus 10 on the night, which makes sense, because the Grizzlies won by 10, but Tillman got interviewed after the game, and I was shocked when I heard what he said, they said, hey Xavier, did you think that you were going to be interviewed tonight, and he said, um, I think he said, heck no, something like that, like, he was surprised to be even getting interviewed because he didn't think he would have that big of an impact on any game in this series, let alone being the best player in that entire game. Like, maybe LeBron was better, but he was not on the winning end, and other than LeBron, Xavier Tillman had the most points in that game, which is wild. The only players to score 20 points were Rui Hachimura, LeBron James, and Xavier Tillman. Desmond Bain didn't have 20, even though it felt like he couldn't miss. Jaron Jackson Jr. didn't have 20. Nobody on that Grizzlies team other than Xavier Tillman had 20, and they still were able to win the game, and that's because they had six guys, nearly seven, with David Roddy having nine, score in the double digits. So, um, good performance all around by the Grizzlies to win that game without Jaron Jackson Jr., but my point still stands that Anthony Davis has got to toughen up. There can't be any of these little knick-knacky injuries that keep you out um, like that shoulder injury where you said you couldn't feel your arm and then 
pretty quickly they were like, yeah, no, like, basically nothing's wrong with him. Like, it's a stinger, I guess. Which, a stinger, yeah, they'll hurt. But, like, going back to the locker room for it's a little dumb. I don't know. I'm just kind of sick of AD when he isn't playing good. When he is playing good, oh, my God, I love him. He's a great player. And he's one of my more favorite players to watch in the league because he can score with such ease. But it's just, like, certain nights he's just like, eh, I'm going to just put in autopilot tonight and I'm not going to try to score. And I'll only score when it's convenient or when I just randomly feel like, eh, I'll just go score right now. He needs to have that mindset more of, okay, I'm going to score right now. And it's it's not forcing it because he is that good to where if he forces it, it's not really forcing it because he's that good at the game of basketball. So he's got to be the leading scorer for the Lakers to win at a high level. Because, yeah, if LeBron scores 30 night after night after night. LeBron had 28 last night, so it's not like he was that far from 30. But if LeBron's putting up 30 back-to-back-to-back games, the Lakers will probably win a good amount of those games. But if Anthony Davis is scoring 30 and he has 10-plus rebounds, I'm pretty fairly confident the Lakers win that game. That's how much of an impact he has on them because you can count on LeBron to get 20, minimum 20. And then you can count on your role players enough to be competent enough that with that combined 50 right there, you're probably winning the game because then you all, all you have to do is have your role players fill in the rest. And Austin Reeves is kind of more reliable at this point than Anthony Davis, which is weird to say because Austin Reeves tries to score the basketball, tries to draw fouls. Anthony Davis feels like shies away from contact a little bit more than I would like him to. And he really is. Like, he is the third best center in the NBA, which doesn't sound like that good. But the two players he's behind are arguably number one and number two players in the league. Now, I know Giannis is probably the best player in the league, but Jokic and Embiid are number one and number two in MVP voting, and there's nothing you can say there. And that third best center is is Anthony Davis. Now, there's Sabonis and Bam and Abayo and Carl Anthony Towns, but Anthony Davis is better than those three. And Giannis is a power forward, just to get that clear. So, AD is the best center in the league and um also i don't want to hear the argument that he's a power forward because he starts at center that is the position he plays uh at least this season so he needs to start playing like it because right now sabonis had like that one game that wasn't great i think it was game one but he, he's kind of outplayed ad like ad on the defensive end has had some good plays and he's blocked a lot more shots than i would have ever expected with having 12 blocks in two games because I believe he got, he got seven in that first one, I, I believe. And then he got five in the second one. That's wild. But he still isn't playing physical enough with Xavier Tillman. Letting him score, whatever, 20 plus, 21 or whatever, 22. That's too much. You got to be more physical with Jaron Jackson Jr. too. And uh, yeah, you were out-rebounded by Xavier Tillman. Jaron Jackson Jr. at the same amount of rebounds as you. Um, Aldama had seven. And then you were... Out-rebounded by LeBron, who you've got an inch on, I guess. But, like, still, you, you need to be doing better than how you've been doing lately. And, um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on this. I want to know your guys. I just wanted to rant because I feel like he has been so disappointing so many different times that it's just to the point where, AD, you got to lock in. You have to. This one is on you, bro. If we lose a series, it's on you. Lakers going two straight home games. You should be able to win minimum one of those, but really you should be able to win both of them, especially if John Morant misses at least one game. So, Anthony Davis, this is on you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, turn notification bells to all. See you guys all later in the next video. And peace out, my friends. See you guys next time. Bye.